Good morning, folks. Today it's like we're going to be loading crates instead of boxes. Only a couple stories on the docket today, but they're a bit heavier than usual. We're starting, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find both the polar confined coronal holes and a patchy and shifty complex near low latitudes. When they are not solid and large, but like this instead, the solar wind tends to be less intense. And that about describes the solar wind at Earth at the moment, actually dropping intensity so much even from already relatively quiet range two days ago, the geomagnetic conditions are returning to the floor. Let's go out to Jupiter for our aesthetic piece of the day with Hubble. On the left is how we usually see it, but on the right we've got infrared and UV cameras on Hubble working too, making the giant planet appear to be showing off red, white, and blue. But here's another point of interest. We have a new major storm on Jupiter. It's the white patch up top with trailing blue swirls, which tells us it's a deep atmospheric storm and a powerful one. This may become a somewhat lasting feature for a while here. Folks, we're going to get a look at a perfect global electric circuit return column. High pressure fair weather brings the current from the sky to the ground, and here's one way it goes back up. Hurricane Teddy, massive out on the water, and like all those cells, it's drawing air into the middle at ground level. But where does the air go? Up. At the cloud layer, it's the column we picture as centered through the hurricane disk. And when we get all the way up to the jet stream, the column is still spinning, but now it's spinning outward. The air sucked in at ground level with water and dust and ions and the rest of the current gets returned to the sky. Let's get just a quick look at new astronomical troubles due to atmospheric turbulence, which they say increases visibility blur in the sky making astronomy more difficult. And folks, we already know that turbulence can be enhanced by solar activity, even down to the minute scale, through the global electric circuit. But more important than the astronomical visibility are the clouds, the number one uncertainty measure in all climate models, helping to cause oversensitivity to CO2, model bias, and error propagation. And it turns out, they need turbulent modeling in there too. This does mean that the way they will model the climate is going to have to change, and I am hoping it would be nice if they included the solar forcing of those turbulent conditions that they say changes everything today. Folks, it was 2012 when the day after tomorrow Ice Age theory got its best boost. Heat and loss of polar sea ice can trigger a major cooldown, just not in the four or five days like they showed in that movie. Well, inspired by this work, it's been a long eight years, and this week we find the most in-depth look at this anyone's ever seen. They found that there was a tremendous amount of Arctic ice release just before the Little Ice Age, which helped cause a multi-century cold period. While the deepest part of the Mini Ice Age indeed needed the maunder minimum solar activity to boost it in the 1600s, the Little Ice Age actually began in the 1400s and did so much closer to the after-effects of the medieval warm period, which had sent ice melting and breaking off from the Arctic, triggering the Little Ice Age, exactly what's happening on a much grander scale today. Folks, whether it's clouds controlled by solar modulated turbulence or the best to date recognition that this planet regulates rapid temperature changes with swings in the other direction, this is one heck of a one-two punch. These topics are discussed in our textbook, Weatherman's Guide to the Sun, not just everything about the sun and climate change, but short-term storm activity earthquakes, health and technology. We also have our fall merchandise coming out today. Cat has opted for the long sleeve tee. That would be me in the green with baby Adam. We have four colors for the fall and we get them where you get the book at otf.cells.com. Cat's children's books are there too. And if you just want more information about the textbook, try spaceweathernews.com slash publications. We are going to be giving away a very few number of our textbooks randomly with those orders of the long sleeve tee. Go on our Facebook page for more information. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now it's 445 AM in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.